All right, well, today's segment is a little different than we planned because of the weather. Um, I'm going to talk in today's segment about decision making when the weather goes against you. And let me just set the scene. So we came, we're here in Kamitsa on the island of Viz in uh, Croatia. And last night was quite an interesting night, uh, you know, even with a little experience of some storm at sea. See, I didn't even shave this morning. I had a very sleepless night. Uh, we had wind gusts up to 35 knots coming down off the mountain there. And I'll show you out on deck uh, how we're secured to a mooring buoy. So I felt very safe uh, in that regard, but there was some gusts. The boat was uh, yawing around quite violently on the bridle that we have on the buoy. Uh, to the point where, you know, you start to think, hmm, what if one of those bridles pops? How quickly will the other one go? I've got two, right? If one goes, how quickly will the other one go? So I made sure last night that I had the engines with the power on, just ready to go, push, push on the buttons if I needed them. And, uh, you know, and you plan your exit. You plan what are you going to do if the ropes break in the middle of the night? Um, where are you going to go? Well, I could have gone up and down just behind us in the bay relatively sheltered and just driven in a straight lines up and down up and down all night i could have gone around the corner into the harbor there um protected for sure uh, i wouldn't be wanting to try and tie this up on my own in 35 knots of wind um so again the option might be just to do small little circles in the harbor in there so you plan your plan your exit plan how you're going to get out of here i had um my our weather jacket ready to go, flashlight ready to go, lighting on, a mental map of the buoys if I had to navigate my way out of here in the dark where the buoys are so I don't run over buoys. Also very important, the green flashing light on the end of the breakwater there. Um, that's going to be my, uh, my guiding light quite literally if I do decide I'm going to go around the corner into the jetty. Where's that green flashing light? What's my orientation? So this is all last night. So, fairly sleepless night. So, let's talk about the weather forecast for today. And we're getting all kinds of different forecast models, but the bottom line is they're forecasting wind of 20, 19, 17 knots out of the east, southeast, pretty much the whole day. Possibility of thunderstorms, etc. Now, <clears throat> we are here in Kamitsa on the island of Viz. The wind forecast is out of the southeast, which is in this direction, right? Coming up this way. So my thinking right now is, and, and by the way, here's the big decision maker. We got to get the boat back by tomorrow night, Friday, about 50 miles north, because it's the end of our charter. So there's the time pressure, okay? Now, those of you scholars who've read the book Heavy Weather Sailing by Adlard Coles, the Bible of uh, survival conditions in uh, small boats, right? written decades ago. In the analysis of why the boats in the book got themselves into difficult situations, the key takeaway was decision-making to go to sea, usually under time pressure, because we got a deadline, we got to be somewhere or get the boat somewhere, and putting out into weather that they never should have gone out into and got themselves into trouble. So I have all this playing in my mind right now today, right? The weather forecast is really not nice. Um, and yet, we have time pressure. So I'm weighing my decisions very carefully. I know that with the wind direction being what it's forecast coming out of the southeast, if I come out of here and scoot around the north side of the island of Viz, I should be in the lee of all that wind and sea, and I can certainly tuck around into the town, the town of Viz up on the uh, northeastern corner. So I know I can get there quite, quite happily. From there, It'll be a dash across to the shelter of the island of Avar, again with the wind coming up in this direction from the southeast. And if I can, and this is about 12 miles across to the shelter of Avar. If I can get to the end of Avar, I can scoot across this bit, which is at how many miles at sea? There's five, five, ten miles, which is a little over an hour, and get round the corner of Branch and continue up uh, north to our base port in the shelter, um, in the lee of the island of Salt and the island of Brat. So if I can get across this bit and that bit, then we'll be well on our way. But we're being super cautious 
checking the weather forecast models, comparing different models um, to see what they're saying, and also to see if they're changing. Weather changes. The forecast you saw yesterday may not be the forecast that's happening today, okay? You need to keep that in mind. Uh, we get very used to, uh, on our TV news, we see a weather forecast for the coming weekend on Tuesday, and then we're surprised that it, at the weekend it was the weather was somehow different than what was forecast. Weather forecasts change, so you know keep that in mind. So we're checking it, checking it, and being very considered in the decision making as to go or to not go. Right now we're going to go. We're going to scoot out around the top of the island, evaluate from there. So let me take you out on deck and show you the setup. All right, so we're going to start the engines. Check we got gears. Yeah. 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 All right, let's go up to the front of the boat and we'll show you the setup. And you've seen before in my uh, video on how to coil a rope, I always recommend having ropes uh, available to you, secured, so they're not going over the side of the road, uh, of the boat. In case you need a rope in a hurry, in case you need to tow someone or need a tow yourself, you've got a rope right here, you can throw to someone, so always have those there. All right, so we're secured to the uh, permanent mooring buoy by two bridles, one uh, up on the starboard side, one on the port side. I'm gonna release port side first, I'll tell you why. They're both under no load at the moment, so it doesn't really make much difference which one I release first. But if I release the starboard side um, last, I'm that much closer to my helm position. If I'm over here, it's that bit further for me to walk across the boat and up to my helm position. So why not save myself a couple of seconds? Because we're not charging around, but we're moving with purpose. Uh, and so I'll release the starboard side first. So let's get rid of the port side bridle. I'm gonna throw it down here in the well and come and secure it later once we're away from these moorings. And so finally, quick check around. Let's get the port side ready to go. All right, final check before I let it go. All clear, no boats, okay. Then we'll, uh, Alison, when you finish videoing, we'll have you go down and switch on the navigation lights. I'll, I'll call to you through the window. All right, let's get out of here. Okay. Last night in all that wind, the sunbathing cushion pad, big cushion pad, blew off the boat. We're just heading out, but guess what I spotted? safety point of view probably should have had a life jacket on no wind very benign conditions so look forward to your comments all right so I'm gonna call on VHF there's a big uh, catamaran I mean, 
behind us. He's got a professional skipper on board who probably knows this area very well. And I just want to run my game plan past him, okay? So I'm going to call him on channel 16 of low power because he's only right there. I don't know the name of the boat, so I'm going to call in a way that hopefully makes sense to him and let's see if he responds. White Hull at the western end of the Isle of Fizz. Catamaran at the western end of the Isle of Fizz. This is Catamaran Bizu. Catamaran Bizu on your starboard bow. Range 1 cable. Channel 16. Over. And I'm keeping a lookout while we're in here doing this. changing plans. So we did come up the north side of Fizz Island in the Lee. Um, the plan had been to go in here to the town of Fizz, right in here, sheltered. The wind is still out of the southeast and has now come up to about 20 knots. And as you can see, we got a bit of a lump. We're coming out to the shelter of the uh, lee of the island. So it's a bit lumpy, but it's about seven miles across to the Plakini Islands. We're now, we've decided to change plan. We're going to come across here. We're going to get behind the Plakili Islands in the Lee and get some shelter and reevaluate from there. And then we might actually continue. Again, the wind is forecast to say east and southeast the whole day. We might come across this bit here, which is about another six or seven miles through the gap, and then continue our journey up to Simonic in the lee of the islands of Salter. Again, the wind direction coming up from the southeast. So that's the current plan. It's going to be a little bit bouncy going across. By the way, as I made that 40 degree alteration of course to port a few minutes ago, as we changed our plan, um, actually it was significantly, significantly more comfortable because the sea, as you can see, is now about about 30 or 40 degrees on the bow instead of pounding straight into it as we were coming up the north side of uh, Biz. We were pounding, boom, boom, bang. Uh, and now with the sea on the bow, uh, 30 or 40 degrees, a bit rocky rolly, but actually probably a bit more comfortable. So we're going to scoot across and we'll see you in the Plakini Islands. So I'm coming off autopilot onto standby and I'm going to steer manually. That allows me to spot some of the bigger swells and then just come up into them a little bit and kind of just steer around the waves a little bit. I think a little bit more comfortable uh, as we get across into the shelter of the Plakini Islands. Shelter in here, and actually the direction. 
direction we need to go is up over here. And so why not tuck in behind the island of Avar and just make a broad left turn and go with the wind and the sea in the direction we actually want to go. So that's what we're considering right now. Let's see what happens. So the plan is evolving as the conditions not on wood seem to be very favorable. The sea state has gone down. It's still quite lively. We've got 20 knots of wind out of the east to southeast. And our plan has now changed. So the jib has given us an extra knot of speed. And it's also, it also makes the boat a little more stable. It's not rocking so much. That's good. But now the plan right now is to come behind the Plakini Islands, which are right here, get in the lead because the wind direction, you see the 20 knot bubble there, is from the east. We're going to get in behind the Plakini Islands and then we're going to, then we're going to make our turn uh, up through the gap right here and we're going to go up the north side of the island of Salta. So I think that's going to give us the best shelter from the wind and the sea state and I think it's going to be a cracking sail after all. Alright, so we got ourselves into the lee of the Plakini Islands. Look how the sea, excuse me, salt, how the sea has calmed down. And so now what we're going to do is a nice big 40 degree turn through this gap here to come up around the north side of the island of Salter. Again, the wind remains out of the east at 21 knots. So we're going to turn left. I could have come a more direct route across like this, but I wanted to come up into the lee of the islands and then uh, bear away onto a nice broad reach. Should be really nice and comfortable to get us up the other side of Salter. Let's see how it goes. First one, a long day and if I look a little tired it's because I am but uh, we're here safely in a marina and I got a shower and uh, but it's been quite a long day remember I told you we started down here in the island of Viz with 35 knot gusts of wind hitting us off the mountain all of last night so I barely slept at all last night uh, just a sixth sense wanting to be aware of what was happening in case anything went wrong and then remember I told you that we had the wind out of the southeast which is in this direction excuse me this direction the whole day. It peaked at about 25, 28 knots uh, to earlier today and then settled back down to about 17, 18, 19, 20 knots. And so what we did was we came up the lee side of Viz. The challenge then was how rough would it be coming across this open water here behind the Plakini Islands? And the answer is it actually wasn't that bad. We had a few swells about six feet, but it really wasn't that bad got in the shelter of the Plakini Islands. Remember I told you at the start of this that decision making in dodgy weather is <clears throat> the primary factor in when things go wrong. If you're under time pressure, you've got to get somewhere where you've got to get your boat back or whatever it is, just as we did today. And that's why we were very, very flexible in our decision making and in our route uh, planning. <clears throat> so having made it across here behind the Plakini Islands, the shelter of the Plakini Islands, the next plan we had, remember the winds coming out of the southeast here at 20 knots, was to cross across and through the gap. <clears throat> and we said we were going to run up the north side of Salta because we were grinding up, uh, up here. And so we thought we'd have shelter coming up here. But as we came across this area of open water between Branch and Avar, we realized it really wasn't that bad at all. It actually wasn't bad at all. The wind had settled in at 20 knots, a steady 20 knots out of the east southeast. And so we were like, you know what? Let's not go through the gap and go up the long way. Let's just make a 50 degree left turn and come across. And that's what we did. So we tucked into a little marina at the top here of Salter to see if we could stay the night there, but there was no room at the marina. 
So we continued on all the time with the wind coming up here at 20 knots um, in the direction of our base port where we need to get tomorrow, which is Sibonik, which is up here somewhere in this area here. We've ended our day in Rochnaznika, if I said that correctly, Marina Frapper, but that's where we are right now. And again, you can hear the wind howling in the moss and in the trees, um, but uh, it's, it's been a very, very successful day. So balancing the caution of the environmental conditions, the weather, the wind, the sea state, etc., with the need to, you know, make a deadline, get this charter boat back home uh, by, frankly, end of the day tomorrow, or the very worst case, first thing Saturday morning. So we're in good shape. So it's been a very, very successful day. We're all safe. And, uh, you know, it's just time to relax now, have a shower, and uh, reflect on uh, a really what was actually a really awesome adventure of a day. So I hope you get to enjoy that. If you're out on a charter vacation, <clears throat> I know you want sunshine and sunbathing and the hot weather. Of course we do. That's why, partly why we go on vacation. But when the weather turns and it's grey skies and all of that, the adventure doesn't end. The holiday doesn't end. The vacation doesn't end. It's a new twist on the adventure. And today was an absolute adventure that just kept on giving as we kept saying, all right, that last bit was okay. We, we did that. Let's, let's press on to the next bit. And so here we are with a very, very successful day under our belt and a nice dinner waiting for us in the restaurant over there.